A recent uptick in the number of small earthquakes in and around Yellowstone National Park has led to renewed fears that the region may be about to experience a major volcanic eruption. Do we need to be concerned? There's no doubt that the Earth will experience more super eruptions. Some of the super volcanoes that have erupted in the past and caused global mayhem retain the capacity to do so again. Possible contenders for the next super eruption include the Phlegrian Fields volcano west of Naples, Italy, and Lake Torpo in New Zealand, as well as locations in Indonesia, the Philippines, Central America, Japan, and the Kamchatka Peninsula in eastern Russia. But of all the candidates, none has been so talked about or instilled such popular fear as one of the most visited, picturesque, and unique areas of the planet. Right in the heart of the United States, the Yellowstone Caldera in the northwest corner of Wyoming. The caldera, occupying about half of Yellowstone National Park, measures some 72 kilometers by 55 and is the site of numerous past eruptions, many of them in the range of ordinary volcanoes, but a few in the supervolcano class. The most recent of these gargantuan outbursts, about 640,000 years ago, is thought to have been responsible for the demise of many of the larger mammals in North America at the time, including camels, rhinos, and elephants, which choked on toxic gases or starved to death following the dieback of vegetation blanketed by the continent-wide ash cloud from the event. Other major eruptions of the Yellowstone supervolcano happened 1.3 million and 2.1 million years ago. The average period between eruptions geologists have determined is about 700,000 years, which means we're due for another one at any time. This wouldn't be good news for America. Blanketed in a layer of ash a meter thick and a great deal more in areas close to the eruption, the country would be rendered virtually unfit for human habitation. Midwestern states, home to much of the nation's food production and industry, would be hit especially hard. But the effects would be felt much wider afield. Global cooling, the mass dying of plants and then the mass dying of animals and people would follow in the days, months and years after the cataclysm. In 2005, a working group of the Geological Society of London assessed the consequences of a contemporary super-eruption. Pronounced deterioration of global climate would be expected for a few years following the eruption, it said. Such events could result in the ruin of world agriculture, severe disruption of food supplies, and mass starvation. The effects could be sufficiently severe to threaten the fabric of civilization. Not surprisingly, having seen dramatizations on TV of what a super eruption can do, people get a little jittery when reports come through of fresh activity in the nation's favorite national park. Run for your lives, Yellowstone's going to explode, read a slightly tongue-in-cheek news headline by the Associated Press in January 2009. Hundreds of minor earthquakes in the preceding weeks had set nerves jangling reminding everyone that the beautiful landscape and photogenic curiosities such as geysers, mud pots and hot springs in this corner of Wyoming sit atop a supervolcano that will burst into life again, sooner or later. Small earthquakes aren't unusual in Yellowstone and the signs of geothermal activity are everywhere to be seen, from the predictable appearances of the old faithful geyser to the constantly bubbling, burbling, sulfurous cauldrons of hot water and mud to be found all over the park. These crowd-pleasing features are just mild expressions of the colossal forces that are steadily building up below. Between 6 and 16 kilometers beneath the picture-perfect scenery of Yellowstone is a giant magma chamber which is slowly but surely filling with molten rock from the underlying mantle. It's an estimated 50 kilometers long, 30 kilometers wide, and 10 kilometers deep, and is fed by a magma plume that rises at a 60 degree angle from at least 660 kilometers beneath the Earth's surface. 
The deepest part of the plume lies under the town of Wisdom, Montana, about 240 kilometers from Yellowstone Park. Trapped gases are steadily increasing the pressure inside the magma, and although some of that pressure is gently relieved on a daily basis by the various geothermal features that attract visitors to the park, it isn't enough. There may be minor eruptions first, but at some point in the future, the pressure inside the subterranean chamber will reach a critical level. The overlying rock will split apart, and the gas-laden magma will erupt explosively over a wide area at the surface. On that fateful day, more than a thousand cubic kilometers of magma could burst into the light of day and have worldwide consequences. If Yellowstone does blow in the coming years, the warning signs won't necessarily tell us if it's going to be a super eruption or a smaller event of which there have been many, the last just 70,000 years ago. It's also possible that we wouldn't have much of a heads up in the case of a global scale event. But even if we did know a few days, weeks or months in advance of an impending supervolcano, it's not obvious how people and their governments could constructively respond. Getting out of the immediate area as fast as possible would be a given, but this would involve evacuating at least a several hundred kilometer wide radius of ground zero, and the panic and traffic jams that would ensue hardly bear thinking about. Unfortunately, although it would minimize the loss of human life, evacuating an entire continent isn't really an option. For people at a safe distance from the actual lava flows, health problems from a much wider dust fallout would be the immediate problem, so that face masks and preferably more heavy-duty breathing apparatus of the kind used to protect against noxious fumes would be the most essential survival aid. Beyond that, people would probably be advised to stay indoors as much as possible and try to have available a few weeks supply of food and water until the worst of the eruption was over. The good news is that the Yellowstone caldera is one of the most closely monitored and studied volcanically active regions on Earth. Scientists measure it daily with a battery of instruments and they see no cause for concern. According to the US Geological Survey, the probability of a large caldera forming eruption within the next few thousand years is exceedingly low. As for the most recent increase in activity in 2021, the USGS issued this statement. If magmatic activity were the cause of the quakes, we would expect to see other indicators like changes in deformation style or thermal gas emissions, but no such variations were detected. Thanks for watching and sleep well.